Well, hello again, everybody. I'm just having a bit of a painting afternoon today. So whatever time you're watching us, thank you for joining me. I'm going to be showing you a few more brush strokes, but particularly I want us to learn how to build up a wreath so that we can do Christmas wreaths. I also want to show you some holly strokes um, alongside the fir that we've got here and the pine cones. And for anybody who hasn't used painting pages before, they're really so, so easy. First of all, you need to learn how to load your brush. And I would recommend that if it's not something you've already learned, that you follow it along one of the other videos that we've got. But just as a quick reminder, this one has, in fact, I'm just gonna reach a wipe. Please excuse me for a moment. Should have done that a second ago. This one has got some um, of, of the cream and also some red on it. I'm not gonna put it back in the water. I'm just gonna squeeze out that paint. You can clean up with water. I'm working with Cadence Hybrids. They're a fabulous product. They work on so many different surfaces. And one of the things that I'm going to do in some of the future videos is show you how to paint on terracotta and glass and fabric, and we can work on lots of different things. So, but for the purpose of this, it's all about learning the brush strokes. So I'm going to take my green and my white and um, I've chosen a leaf green, which I particularly like. And I've got them at across the two corners of the brush, so they're sort of like in triangles. And then to load it, you need to blend this paint in. So we're blending it so that A, it rainbows from green to white, and then secondly on the brush, it does the same thing. So I'm just going to go back in and reload it now. For you to practice at home and get used to the actual stroke all you need to do is come onto your painting pages and trace it and it's a very very simple stroke once you've done that come on with your cloth and that literally just wipes off and it's as easy as that and you can use these as many times as you'd like i'm going to go straight onto the black I paint on black because it's one of the things that shows up the colour really well. It's a good contrast for you to see. But also you can see the quality of the paint because the opacity is really, really strong. That means that we've got really good pigment in here and, and that single coat of paint is really important. So that first stroke that we were doing looked something like this. And then we're going to join them up. So we're going to come up and we're going to come back. It's starting, you see it already, can't you, the points of the holly. So we're going to come up like that and down like that. And then for the third one, I'm just gonna twist it. And then I'm gonna come round. Let's create another point, another point, and then slide it in. And remember when you lead with the brush, whichever color leads, that will be the one that is the least predominant. So the most predominant will be the one that follows. So we're coming here and we're just gonna go through there with our green. And there's our first holly leaf. To do our fern, it's even more simple, if it's possible. But right on the edge of the brush. Now, this is really important. This is where you need to remember which colour leads and what the effects are. So first of all, let's put a stem in and then let's lead. So we're going to lead with the white. So the green's going to be the colour that's going to be the most predominant. So you're going to see all these little feathers of fern. Now, I'm letting the, the paint run out and I'm doing that on purpose because I'm actually at the moment just laying down the background, okay? If I now turn my brush over, the white will become more predominant because that's the last color to come off the paper. So you can see how that has another effect on it. And we're starting to build up our fern. So I'm gonna come back in here, some more of the green, some more of the white. Just check my loading. Occasionally you might want to put a tiny little brow, a little bit of brown on there. So let's run that through. Let's let that, some of that brown come through. And again, you can see that coming together. If I now paint, this is where it really gets exciting. So I'm now gonna paint a holly leaf next to it. So let's paint that piece of holly. And let's come out there and we'll go around here. And I, you can keep your brush on the page or take it off. It's whatever works for you. I'm just going to come in there. I'm going to put in a 
another piece of fern so just going to let's didn't put my stem down first you might find it easier to keep that stem down to start with because it does help you when you're planning the direction that you're you're working in and you know the amount of greenery that you get depends and the and the white depends on how snowy it is so I'm just going to get a tiny bit of the brown on here I'm going to put a little bit of that in as I build this in and let that go over my holly so and then this is the great part so I'm literally going into the red with the end of my brush and I'm going to put a red Christmas berry. And let's put another one in. Here's another Christmas berry. And finally, a third one. So we've got three Christmas berries amongst the holly and the greenery. Now it's not particularly aesthetically well positioned. So I'm just going to come in here and let's put a little bit of this behind that little bit of holly we've got there and I'm just going to go over that little bit there and you can see that just by building up the design putting in our holly and our berries we're creating just the most fabulous but simple piece of Christmas artwork and seasonal artwork all those lovely flowers I'm letting that just fade a tiny bit so we've almost got the ghost effect there and then let that green come through and one last little touch a smaller brush another dot of white and let's put a little tiny dot as our highlights on our berries so quick and easy but looks really effective so let's take that to the next level and we'll build a full Christmas wreath. I'm just gonna pop those out the way. I'm gonna wipe off the ends of the brushes. It's something I do forget to do, and that's when you end up with it all over you. It's very clean to work. You can see I've got next to nothing around me. There's nothing on the surface here. So I'd like to talk to you about painting your Christmas cake. Can you imagine doing this on the top of a cake, painting that Christmas wreath? So the Christmas wreath, which I've got here, is just a combination of what I've just been doing with a few of the pine cones in. I'm going to show you how to do those. So to work on the top of the cake, obviously we can't use our hybrid acrylics, although that's the only surface they're not going to work on. You can use edible food powder and also edible varnish. And by using the varnish as the medium to make the paint, you can paint just like I am doing now. Try it, it's really, really effective. And then I'm just going to show you how to do a couple of other things. So we'll we'll do a sprig first and then I'll go on, move on to doing the pine cones. I'm going to start off with the green and the brown. And I'm putting the colours up here so that you can see them if you want to refer back to them. So for the green and the brown, and I'm going to start and I'm going to create a branch. I'm just going to go through with that branch like this. And then because I'm on the brown side, I'm going to I'm actually going to follow through with the brown and I'm going to cross that over and let that come up here. And then finally, just one more that way. So I've got a few different leaves going in different directions. I'm going to, using the brown, and let's have a think, let's put a little bit of the green, and we'll have a tiny bit of that red on, we'll side load the red. So we've got a really autumnal, that's lovely dark shades there coming through. And we'll do some of these little leaves. So first of all, I'm going to look at that lovely rich colour. I'm really lucky because I live out in Derbyshire and, you know, when we go out into the countryside at this time of year, you know, around November, December, there's still a few leaves on the trees and they're these lovely, really rich autumnal colours. So I'm just deciding where they're going to go. And let's put a few of those in. Just let that slide through. I'm going to change brush sizes. So if you want to paint smaller, rather than actually painting with a smaller brush, oh, there it is, then paint, um, sorry, rather than trying to paint a smaller shape, paint with a smaller brush, it's much, much easier to change your brush size down. So 
in here. Let's have a little bit of that cream. So we'll get some of that coming through. This is a good one to mix when you've got golds. Put golds in here as well because you'll get a really rich and bright and sort of coppery tones that which look great as well. So I'm just going to put a few more of these in. And then what we'll do is we'll add in a couple more down here that are quite strong in colour. And I'm going to put in a pine cone. So a pine cone. To do that, we're going to work with our brown and our white. I'm just going to blend in the cream that's underneath. And this is the shape that we're doing. We start off at the top and you just do one little turn. And then just below that, you're going to do three or two, depends on how it starts to build up. And look how you're just building up that pine cone. And they're little tiny turns of the brush that create the cone. I'm running out of paint, so I should be refilling right now. Depends how big and how fat you want it, but that's the kind of shape we're aiming for. So I'm going to go in here. Let's get those colours. And I'm going to put a pine cone right here. So I'm going to go up there and then there and there and there and then here again. So I want a little bit more of my brown because so I've lost it. I'm picking up the white as I'm going, which is fine, but don't let it become too white unless it's obviously snowed really heavily overnight. And you can see how you then build that, bringing in that colour. And just literally a little tiny twist of the brush and you get these fabulous cones and if you want them more open all you need to do a little bit of green on there as well is um, just literally turn your brush so that it's wider apart and let the cone dip around the edges so it's sort of fatter and more open and we get this really nice effect so I'm just building in the elements I'm picking I'm only picking up brown as I'm going here because I'm wanting to keep this really nice and dark with the color I'm going to get a little bit of green on the bottom as if the pine cone's not quite ripe or ready to open there perhaps a little bit more than I want let's go back in there and take that bit out and then you get a little stalk don't you that brings them onto the trees so we now need in amongst here some pine leaves because we've got pine cones um, a little bit of designer license having different leaves in there but that's all part of the fun of it so i'm going to go in and put some leaves in so i'm picking up the brown the green and i'm also side loading a tiny bit of that that russet as well that red so let's put where we're going to go we'll go here We'll have some pine leaves just tucking out. Then I'm going to get plenty more of that green and we'll have a bit more coming here. Need some, a little bit of white. Because the paint covers so well, you can actually put these down first and then go over and put your pine, pine cones. And it probably is a little bit easier than the order that I'm working in. But I have been building this up as we've been learning the brushes and the brush stroke so got again there you can see and let's have a little look at it um what else do we want on here i know what we need we need a few berries for sure so i'm going to put a few of those on let's just put them in little groups so that we've got i think four or five of them at a time and then we'll have some more up here just a little set of three let's put some down here so but quite a little cluster in this area. Um, I think I'm quite liking that. If anything, I'd like me like to have started off with a slightly lighter stem, but I'm not going to worry about that at this point. And then we'll go back with the white, tiny little dots. If you find that your hand is a little bit shaky, which at the moment I can feel the water running from the brush down the brush handle it's making my hand feel a bit shaky a little tip for you use your little finger to control it because you've got a lot more control here when you go to put that on so you can get just a tiniest little dot in there just touch it gently there okay and then the last thing we need we need some snow we need some really nice snow in here now 
At home, I'd be using a toothbrush, but that isn't something I've got right now. So let's see how we go. So we're gonna need some water and some of this white, and we're gonna make it into a really inky puddle. And by inky, I mean fluid and liquid like this. So it's runny and just looks great. Right, let's try it over here first. I'm just gonna go, yeah, that's a good sign because it means it's gonna behave itself, I hope. I'm just putting a tiny splatter of snow over the whole thing. And there we go. That's our Christmas painting. And please do paint full wreaths because they're so much fun. And hopefully we'll have time before the end of the season to get another lesson in.